Hi all YouTubers, uh, welcome to Freakin' Jeep. My name is Tiny and this is the monkey. Uh, I know a lot of ball joint service kits all come different, but uh, you find yourself a cup to go on top, pad to go on the bottom. It's usually a pretty big puzzle. When you're uh, when you get the kits, usually you know if you if you don't own your don't have your own, you can uh, go to your local parts store. They rent them. They sell them. Um, open the box up start playing because uh, they're all different. I'm using the on the bottom it came with a big flat disc with a big hole in it that fits over the ball joint uh, stud. I got a cup on top and then the other flat plate with the small hole on top. You have to do top first top ball joint, then you can do the bottom one. That's the way it works. Yeah, let's have fun. Sometimes you guys go, well, why do I take it? Why would I take it to the shop and I can do it myself? And sometimes it comes down to tools. I'm pretty lucky here. I got lots of tools of my own. The boss has got tools here. Right now I'm using a ratchet, long handle ratchet, half inch drive. It's about, I don't know, 18 inches long. Ball joints don't like to move very easily, at least the first initial movement. Once it gets moving, it's a little easier, but uh, that's why the mechanics get paid the big bucks. Because they got to have tools. And I'll tell you what, you buy a tool off the tool truck, they're expensive. Had to get a little creative. Took the bottom castle nut, put on the top one here, just the right size to help finish pushing it out that last quarter of an inch because I couldn't get it out. This one here, I had that on the bottom, stuck in here like this. Well, I bottomed out just before it popped loose. That's one upper ball joint out. Now comes the fun part.
Actually, I think the bottom one's going to be the easier one. But This is why you have to take the top one out first. See that? That's how you gotta put it because you gotta press that one down to get it out. You can beat them, beat on them with a hammer. Sometimes you can get them to come out, but uh, a lot of times they don't. So uh, take the top one out as I showed. Then you can stick this in there. Put your cup on the bottom. And then you can drive that one out. Hear that? That was the ball joint popping loose. That's normal. You can use impact wrenches on these things too. Some people don't recommend it. I I prefer to feel what's going on because if uh, use an impact wrench sometimes you're you get stuck up either you got the wrong cup or something and then you spread the the jaws you can open up this part here gets bigger and then it gets out of alignment and then it don't press very well with an impact wrench you don't always feel that until it's too late And there's a the bottom one. Mine, uh, it wasn't so much that there was up and down movement, but there's a little side to side play I could feel. Um, I really couldn't even feel it in the spindle, but I could hear it when I was driving. I would turn the corner and every once in a while I'd get a a clunk. And considering everything else is new on the front end of this thing, the new tie rods here are all brand new. There's like, I don't know, 5,000 miles on them. Drag links were all replaced. Everything was all replaced at once. Last thing to do are these ball joints. So uh, pretty sure that little clunking sound was was the ball joints, but yeah. As you, could, as you heard earlier, it got bad wheel bearing too, so that might contribute, but we'll replace them. When doing ball joints, you should always, always clean up these holes. You see, you can see the edge of those holes there. They're uh, rusty. You get a little buildup. Both of them are that way. I like to use a die grinder with a, um, with a sand, sanding drum on it or a flapper wheel. Um, you can do it by hand with sandpaper. Either way, clean them up makes life a lot simpler. They go, they go in a whole lot easier. Even if you put, uh, you clean them up, just put a little dab of uh, oil on them or transmission fluid, whatever you got handy. Just to give them a little bit of lubrication helps them slide in a whole lot better. It's amazing what just a 
just a, a millionth of an inch and a little, little bit of lube, how much easier that can make your day. If you don't have an air die grinder, you can use your uh, electric rotary tool or whatever you got handy. I've got, uh, this one's got a little wire brush on. I'm going to give it a try first, see if that works. Otherwise, I use, come on, focus here, maybe. This is the one that's pretty worn out, very much left of it. It started out about this big. But this one is too big to fit in a hole. So, we'll try the wire brush. It did clean the rust out, but there's some uh, scale in there yet, so I'm going to put my little sanding drum on. Now you can see it's all nice and shiny inside. Top one too. You can see I, I cleaned the top off here. That's where that ball joint has to rest, sit tight on. So uh, clean up, make sure there's no scale or anything in there. To, it's going to bind and get in the way or anything like that. Everybody likes a clean hole.
New ball joints go in the same way you took them out, only backwards. And no, the procedure is backwards, not the ball joints. As you can see, I took that little rubber weather boot off. I'm using a big hole on the bottom so I can press right against the outside of that ball joint. And right now I've just got that in there. I'm going to put a, a cup on there now so I've got a little bit of clearance because that ball joint sticks up just above that, that bottom part of the, of the C. As you're turning it, tightening them up, you can see here I'm all the way up. As I was tightening, it was going pretty smooth, and then it just came to a sudden abrupt stop. It got real tough. I can't turn, pull it no more. I mean, she's bottomed out. That's where it belongs. Onto the top.
Sometimes it'd be just handier with an extra hand. For all you thinking about evolving out there, how about growing a third arm? Just think of how much easier life would be with a third arm. Don't roll your eyes, you're thinking about it now. Oh. I know you guys can't really see too much from there, but uh, there really ain't that much to see. All pressed in. Now I can put some greaserks on, put the spindle on, pump it full of grease. They gave us grease zerks for, well, they, they gave me grease zerks for my ball joints. <clears throat> I put the bottom one in. They didn't send a plug, so it doesn't look like it's going to hit the axle, so it should be safe. But once I put the axle in, there ain't no more grease in it. So make sure we fill it before.
When I put uh, these ball joints together, I like to take the holes for the cotter pins. I like to run them lengthways, pointing, you know, back and front and back. marred the threads up a little bit trying to turn it. These nuts are really really hard on these things. They're high carbon steel so what I'm doing is tapping. I'm not banging on this full force. Just straightening threads back out. If you never Never seen that before. You learn a new trick today. It's a lot easier to do this now than when it's half together. This isn't a terrible job to do really. You can do this in a driveway fairly easy, you know, with even just fairly basic hand tools. You just gotta have some big sockets. The only specialized tool you really need is gonna be the ball joint press. And that 12 point 13 millimeter socket for the for the uh, wheel bearing bolts, breaker bar. Most of you should have that already if you're doing your own work. Hmm. What did I do with that? No, oh, that must be it. There we go.
Okay, everything's tightened up. Get some grease, grease these things up and finish putting it together.